Hello everyone, my name is Manuel Xavier and welcome to Introduction to Computational Fluid Dynamics, or CFD for short. I'm going to be your professor throughout this course, and in this first lecture we are going to introduce you, introduce you to the basic concepts of CFD, and we're going to give a slight introduction to uh, the software that we're going to use, which is the ANSI CFX software. So, like I said, the theme of this lecture is to introduce you to CFD and its key stages and how you can go from your original planning to analyzing the end results. So the goals of this lecture are uh, show you the base of CFD and how it works, show you the different steps involved in a suce successful CFD project and how to work with CFX. This how to work with CFX we're going to learn in our other lectures, but I'm going to give you a very brief overall view of the, pro of the software. So what is CFD? What is computational fluid dynamics? Basically, computational fluid dynamics is a science of predicting. And what are we predicting? We're predicting uh, fluid flow, heat, mass transfer, chemical reactions, uh, and all its related phenomena. How, we, how does CFD predict this phenomena? It predicts by solving the equations of conservation of mass, momentum, energy, and amongst other equations that will depend on how we depend on your problem. So, CFD can also provide detailed information on the fluid flow behavior, such as distributions of key variables like pressure, velocity, and temperature. It can also show you the forces like lift and drag, distribution of multiple phases if your problem is a multi-phase problem like you are dealing with a gas liquid, gas solid, uh, two types of liquids such as water and oil, amongst others. You can also test species compositions, species compositions by making use of reactions uh, such as combustion or how a pollutant behaves and many others uh, and many many other information you can acquire uh, another advantage of cfd is that it can be used in all stages of the engineering process so you can go all the way back from conceptual studies of new designs for example you want to uh, create a new product and you want to test which is the optimal design for it you or you can work in detailed project, product development, which is the case where you already have a product, but it's not actually working as intended. So you can use CFD to explore another function, functionalities of your product and improve upon it. You can also optimize your product. You can, you can see in, in the industry an area where you, you imagine there is a, a little bit of gap and in this gap, you can optimize uh, some processes. CFD can also be used for that. You can also be used for troubleshooting. For example, you're not quite sure where your product is failing, where it's not working properly, and you can use CFD to test different scenarios, and then you can pinpoint where the trouble is. And you can also use CFD products to redesign uh, an existing product. So this is why CFD is, is a very important step for engineering in the future. It's also important to note that CFD is not here to replace experimenting, physical experimentation, because CFD also always will need physical data for its validation. So both of them go hand in hand in making uh, engineering processes better. Okay. And how does CFD work? Like I said before, it works by solving the equations of uh, conservation of mass and others. And we do this by using the Fint volume method. If you look here in this pipe figure, you can see that it's cut among, uh, it's cutting a bunch of small little pieces. These little pieces are what we call control volume. This is where our equations will be solved. So we're going to have uh, all of the equations that are interested are interesting to us 
inside all of these control value, volumes, and then the information that we acquire in these control values will pass to the control values that are around this one, and then around the next one, the next one, and so on and so forth, uh, in all of the interactions so that we can acquire information in all of these little pieces in all of our control volumes, okay? So, the first step that you need to do when you're using CFD is defining your modeling goals, such as what are you looking for? You need to have this clear in your mind, what is the main goal of your simulation? For example, are you modeling a product so that you can see the difference in pressure in different regions of your product? Or are, do you want to see how much pollutant mass is passing through a channel? Or you want to see, you want to analyze, for example, how uh, the, the position of an air conditioning can affect the temperature in a room. So what you'll be looking for there is the temperature. And this is the, the key question that you need to answer before starting a safety simulation. What am I looking for at the end of the simulation? So you don't waste time and resources analyzing stuff that basically don't matter as much to you. Okay? So what are your modeling options? What simplification assumptions can you make? For example, do I need uh, to simulate my problem in a 3D environment or a 2D, 2D environment will be enough? Do I need to take into account the time or can I make my simulation a steady simulation? Do I need to solve all the fluids that are in my problem or just the most important one? So, what simplifier assumptions can I make? What simplifier assumptions do I have to make, for example? As of right now, it's almost impossible to simulate vegetation in a one-to-one -one basis. That means it's almost impossible to take a real vegetation and put it the same way in a simulation environment. So what do we do? Sometimes we simulate a vegetation as a cylinder. Sometimes we simulate a patch of, the, of vegetation as a rectangular porous box. So this is some, another question that you're going to have to answer. What physical models will need to be included in my simulations? For example, will I, will I simulate all the processes that occur uh, in my open surface or is that not necessary? What degree of accuracy are you looking for? How quickly do you need the results for? Because the, the, the quicker you need your results, probably the less accurate they're going to have to be, because accurate results demand time. And is CFD an appropriate tool? CFD, as of right now, is not the best tool for simulating large-scale problems. For example, you don't want to use CFD to simulate an entire river. There are other more simpler modulation uh, tools that can do this better than CFD. Okay? Step two, you need to identify the domain you will model. For example, uh, remember when I said that CFD is not uh, the best tool to simulate an entire river? Okay, maybe not an entire river, but maybe through a, a, a more thorough engineering analysis, you discover that you don't need to simulate the entire river. You need to simulate a critical part of it. So what do you do instead of simulating the whole river, you're going to simulate just a small part of it. And then CFD comes back uh, into the scene because then CFD can be used as an important tool. Another example is this uh, set of tubes and a little containment system here, a little res reservoir system on it. You want to see what is the best design for this reservoir, for example. So, what you're going to do? Do you need to simulate all of the cylinder and all of this tubulation here and this blue one? Maybe not. Maybe what we can do? We can cut this entire domain and we're going to use just a small part of the orange tube, a small part of the gray tube and a small part of the blue tube so that we have this. We have a small part of the orange, 
a small part of the gray and the small part of the blue tube and we can you can also see the control volumes that div are dividing our domain so this is a question that you're going to need to answer how will you isolate a piece of the complete physical system another question that you're going to need to answer is where will the computational domain begin and end for example, maybe you you used this domain and then you notice that, okay, the, the fluid that is arriving at my containment system, at my tank, is coming through it in a very unusual way. So maybe you're going to need to run, to, to extend the orange pipe, orange tube, so that you allow the flow to be completely uh, evolved when it reaches your tank. So. Is it necessary to cut my domain here, or here, or here? This is, some, is coming from your understanding of the problem and your experience with CFD. So, also, do you have the boundary condition information for at these boundaries? Can the boundary conditions types accommodate all of that information? And can you extend the domain to a point where reasonable data exists? For example, let's say you have uh, your real system is this one, right? With the orange tube all... Uh, with the, the length of the orange tube being this one. And you say, okay, but I don't need to simulate all of this. So I'm going to cut my orange tube right here. But there is a problem. Uh, imagine that you ran this at a physical experiment. And you put a, a velocity measure, measure here. So you have the data here, not here. And you know that the data here is going to be different than this one, okay? Because let's say that the, the flow here is coming through a pump. The velocity right here is going to be different than velocity here. So maybe your simplification is good from a CFD standpoint. It definitely will make it simpler, but it's not good from the data that you have. So maybe you're gonna have to compromise and then use the, the whole orange pipe and make the other pipes a little bit smaller, okay? Another question that you can ask yourself is, can my domain be approximated as a 2D or a symmetric problem? Maybe I don't need to run this entire domain right here. Maybe I can run it, maybe I could cut the domain in half and say, okay, the, my domain is symmetric, so I can cut it in half and my results will be uh, accurate enough to answer my questions. Okay, now you're gonna have to create this domain in your, in your software, in our case in CFD, C, in our case CFX, I'm sorry. CFX accepts a, a wide range of CAD uh, parts, CFD extensions, sorry. Uh, when we we make our joint, we are going to use the built-in CAD system that ANSI CFX has. But if you know how to use any other ones, you can use. So how will we obtain the model of the fluid region? Keep in mind that we are running a computational fluid uh, simulation here so the area that interests us the most is the area where the fluid will be passing by will be passing through so if you look at this pipe right here the fluid is gonna come through the ins the inner walls of these pipes okay so I don't need to model these rings right here okay all and I don't need to model the other the outer walls of this pipe as well. I can, I can only model the inner walls where the fluid is gonna come through and I have a very efficient model to run my simulation, okay? So, how will you obtain a model of the fluid region? Can you make use of existing CAD model, of the existing CAD models? Extract the fluid region from a solid part like we did here. We have the solid part and we just interested in the fluid region of the solid part or am I going to create it from scratch for example I'm going to I don't have any CAD models that I can use from 
or even my my model my product is a new model so there's not going to be uh, an existing CAD uh, system that I can use for from this you can ask yourself can I simplify the geometry can I remove any unnecessary features that would complicate the CFD simulation the CFD meshing process for example uh, such as this for example these rings are only here to complicate my simulation they don't need to be here because there's no fluid passing by them the only reason you would want to simulate these rings if you are interested in an structural analysis of the uh, the physical structure itself for example you want to see how uh, differences in temperature can affect the structure integrity of these rings then yes then you have to to model these rings but we are not concerned in this course with the structural part we're concerned with the fluid part okay so can i make use of symmetry or period periodicity which is are the flow and boundary conditions symmetric for example like i showed here can i cut this domain in half and still get accurate results of my problem another thing that we're going to need to answer is designing and creating our mesh this is something that we're going to do only in the later part of the course because meshing warrants occur a course of its own it's a very complex part of cfd simulations so this is not uh, our main focus in this course right now so we don't have because we don't have a lot of time to work with introduction introduction intro, introducing all the concepts of meshing as well as all the concepts of uh, the cfd simulation per se so when you create your mesh you're going to answer you're going to have to answer three main questions what is the required mesh resolution Resolve geometric fixture fixtures of interest and captures gradients of concern for example velocity pressure or temperature gradients this means that is the mesh that i created enough to capture the gradients of the variables that i'm looking for for example velocity pressure or temperature or is my mesh too coarse to capture these gradients or even is my mesh too fine? Am I going overboard and making a mesh that is way too refined for the problem that I have? Okay? So, what type of mesh is, the, is most appro appropriate? Is a hexedral mesh the best? Or can I use no conformal interfaces to run my simulation, to run my mesh? For example, here we only have a predominantly hexahedral mesh, where here we have different types of elements okay also do do i have sufficient computer resources keep in mind that the more we find your that your mesh is the more computation the computational demanding is going to be so if you don't have a powerful enough computer you're going to have to to work with coarser meshes because you don't have the computational power to run a simulation that refined okay so how many cells or nodes are required and how many physical models will be used? Am I going to run only one mesh? I'm going to run a bunch of different meshes to test a bunch of different cases, okay? Uh, step five, I'm, I'm going to need to set up the solver, which, which means I'm going to have to define my material properties. Am I going to work only with fluid? only with solid or maybe with a mixture of both for example i'm going to work with water and air or i'm going to work with water and sand or i'm going to work with uh, air and sand or i'm going to work with water air and sand a mixture of all of them keep in mind that the more materials you have in your simulation the more complex it's going to become and the more computational power you're going to need as well okay you're also going to need to select the appropriate physical models and this means the turbulence model am i running a laminar simulation 
or am I running a turbulence simulation? Does my simulation involve combustion? Do I have a multi-phase simulation, for, for example? Do I have water and oil in my simulation or water and sand? So these are all questions that you're going to need to answer before running your simulation. You're going to need to prescribe your boundary conditions. You're going to need to set up your inlets, your outlets, how your walls behave, and how, your, how, how all of these boundary conditions interact with each other. You're going, also going to need to evaluate that. Do you have the initial values of, for your simulation? For example, did you have a, a real, uh, ex, a physical experiment that you yourself run and you have the data to provide to your simulation? Uh, or are you going to get this data from the literature? And if you get this data from the literature, are you sure that this data is reliable enough to get you an accurate result in your simulation problem? If that's not the case, what you're going to what are you what you're going to need to do is you're going to take this value from the literature that you know is not the best uh, data that you need to have, and then you're going to run the simulation with this data. Okay? After you run the simulation, you're going to have a new set of data that your simulation solved. And what you're going to do is you're going to get, you're going to take this new uh, data from your simulation and this new data is going to become your initial values, okay? This is also an option that you can use. You're going to have to set up your solver controls. Uh, do you need a very strict set of conditions in your server control or you can make it more robust? The more robust, the more quicker you're going to resolve your simulations. The more strict, it's going to take more time, but you're going to have more accurate results. Another thing you can do here, and this comes from uh, an experience in working with CFD, is you can start with a robust set of solver controls, just so, just so you can test if your boundary conditions are good enough. And then from that point, you can make stricter and more stricter conditions in your server control and then yield more accurate results but running uh, smaller sim running less simulations with stricter solver controls therefore saving a lot of time you can also set up convergence monitors for example uh, are you going to what f first let me introduce the, the concept of convergence right so in every, simula in every CFD simulation, what you're looking for is convergence. What is convergence? Convergence is when you have a, a variable that from one interaction to the next, the, the changes in this variable are negligible, okay? So, and, and what is negligible is something that you decide, okay? For example, right here, you can see, you can decide if negligible is going from minus two to minus three, or you can say, no, my simulation is simple enough that I can say that in the zero to minus one order of converge of changes is good enough, okay? This is something that you decide based on your experience with FD, but most importantly, based upon your knowledge of the problem. Like I say to my to my students in our lab, I can teach anyone to use CFD. The problem is I can't think I can't I can't teach everybody to think about their own problems and then find the best CFD some solutions that that accommodate their problem. Okay, so that's why you need to always have a very clear understanding of what your problem is, what you want from your CFD simulation. In your goal okay so convergence is reached when changes in solution variables from one inter iteration to the next are negligible okay so you can see these are our residuals right here okay and we, we I'm going to show you how we're going to monitor these residuals you can also check the overall property conservation is achieved by checking the imbalances which I'm also going to show you 
you can also say, okay, I, I don't want to check the residuals. Uh, I want to know, I, I want to check the key variables of my problem. For example, I want to see uh, if the velocity variations are high, are, are low enough so I can say that my simulation has converged. And I'm going to also teach you how to do this. I'm going to teach you how to create a monitor uh, point that tracks the quantity that you're inst interested in, okay? The accuracy of a converged solution is dependent upon all the factors that I have already discussed, which means they're dependent upon appropriateness and accuracy of your physical models. For example, did, did my turbulence model was good enough for the, the problem that I'm trying to resolve? For example, maybe you assumed that your simulation was laminar, but in fact it's turbulent, and this is going to affect your convergence, okay? So the, the assumptions that you make in, this, in, the, in the, previous, uh, the previous steps have a, really, have a really great impact right here, okay? This also goes for the mesh. Maybe you try to use a, a very robust mesh because your computational power is very, really low, but then this is going to affect your convergence. You're not, going to, you're not going to be able to reach convergence using this type of mesh, okay? And also numerical errors. Numerical errors mostly come from bad boundary conditions stipulation, okay? So maybe you introduced a boundary condition that is not realistic correct for the problem that you're trying to solve, okay? I know that this all seems very complex at the at the time at this time, but as we go on with our course, you're going to have a clearer picture of what all of this means. Okay. Uh, lastly, you're going to want to examine your results. Okay, and this is where this is one aspect of CFD that it truly shines because you have so much information that you can work with with so much, uh, so many visualization tools that you can answer uh, more questions here than you would be able to, to do if you ran this exact same problem in a, in a physical experiment, experiment, in a physical experimentation uh, realm, so to speak. This, so this is where CFD will give you amazing insights on the problem that you're trying to solve. So, you're going to examine the results to review solution and extract useful data. So you can use visualization tools to you to answer such questions. For example, are you interested in a particular overall flow pattern? And this flow pattern is going to answer you the which design is best for the, the problem that you're going to solve. Are you interested in the separation of the, the material properties? For example, do you want to test the separation of water and air or of water and oil? For example, you want to test, you want to test uh, how you can, air, how the aeration processes can be used to treat water, for example, or to make, or to mix water. And then you can analyze how the air is separating from the water. You can also see where shocks and shear layers are formed and if key flow features are being resolved. This is something that your understanding of the problem is very important because if you understand your problem, you have an idea of where key flow, key flow features are going to show up. And if you run a simulation and you don't observe these key flow, key flow features, you know that your simulation is missing something, okay? You can also use numerical reporting tools to evaluate forces and momentum, average heat transfer coefficients, surface and, vol and volume integrated quantities, and many, many other variables that I'm going to show you, okay? Also, after your post processes, you, can, you have to consider revision, uh, the revision of your model, for example, are the physical models that I use appropriate? For example, like I said before, did I run a laminar simulation where my flow was in fact turbulent? 
Did I consider my flow to be steady, but is in fact unsteady? Are there any compressibility effects? Or is my problem really a 3D problem? Like I said before, I can assume that a 2D representation of my problem could yield accurate results, and after running this 2D representation, I realize that no, my problem is uh, inherently a 3D problem, so I need to run a 3D simulation, okay? Are the boundary conditions that I stipulated correct? For example, uh, is my computational domain large enough? Okay, so if, you, if we go back into this picture, like I said before, maybe at first you run your simulation with the pipe cut here, and then you realize, yeah, but my data is actually here. So then you're going to need to redo your computational domain to accommodate the, the data that you have. And this is something that you can figure out in your post-processing, okay? Are my boundary conditions appropriate? For example, you will see that there is a number of ways to simulate uh, our inlets, to simulate our outlet, to simulate our walls, and how this, uh, these boundary conditions influence our problem. Are the boundary values reasonable? Maybe you consider, uh, uh, for example, let's say that you're running a problem that is unsteady, which means that you need to run it over time. You cannot consider it a steady problem. Then you're going to need to see if the your time representation is good enough. For example, are you running your simulation uh, one second at a time, 10 seconds at a time, 100 seconds at a time, and then you realize, okay, one second at a time is not small enough, so I'm going to run it 0.5 seconds at a time. Okay, so this is one boundary condition that you're going to need to see if the value that you inserted is reasonable enough, okay? You're also going to need to see if your mesh is adequate. Like I said before, uh, maybe you're using a robust mesh, uh, a mesh that is so robust that you're not capturing all the phenomena that you need to capture. Or you can go to the other side of the spectrum and then you're going you're gonna to think, okay, so I'm going to run a very, very fine mesh. But then you run into another problem is that are you going to have enough computational power to run it? Sometimes you're not even going to be able to run a simulation because the mesh that you did is so refined. So you're going to need to find that sweet balance between uh, the level of refinement of your mesh and the computational power and also the time that you have to run this mesh, okay? So, in conclusion, all CFD simulations in all mainstream CFD software products are approached using the steps that I just showed you, okay? So, you go from establishing your geometry and all the simplifications that you're going to need to, to assume, to creating your mesh and if the, the level of refinement of it, and then you're going to need to establish your... Uh, boundary conditions, and then you're going to establish your solution conditions, and then you're going to, going to need to analyze your results and ask yourself if the results that you got are accurate enough so that you can start analyzing it, okay? And, and deriving conclusions from it. So, all CFD simulations are approached using the step that I just described. This, this goes for free software to uh, commercial software, okay? Remember to first think about the aims of the simulation are prior to creating ge geometry and the mesh. This is very useful so you don't waste time uh, running simulations that are not going to yield any results that are going to be useful to you, okay? Like I said, uh, Am I simplifying my geometry too much or am I not simplifying it enough? Is my mesh refined enough or can I make use of a more coarser mesh so I can have more quicker simulations and I can test more stuff 
in a shorter period of time. Make sure the appropriate physical models are applied in the solver and that the simulation is fully converged. This goes back to our uh, boundary conditions and our so, uh, solve solution conditions, okay? For example, maybe you don't need to analyze the residuals. Maybe you, you need to analyze the convergence of velocity or pressure or temperature because these are more important values to you than the residuals, okay? Scrutinize your results. You may need to rework some of the earlier steps in light of the flow field obtained, which means that don't get discouraged if your first simulations don't yield the results that you want. This is actually the natural process of CFD simulations. You rarely gonna strike gold at your first attempt, you know? Also, don't, don't get con too attached to your simulation because you need to be able to look at it from an unbiased standpoint so that you know, okay, I, I'm going to have to uh, make some assumptions that I in the beginning I didn't want to make, but they are necessary nonetheless, okay? So, then, right now I'm going to show you the software that we're going to use. We're going to use the ANSYS CFX uh, software, okay? So, basically, what we have is going to be something like this. We're going to have a setup, uh, a solution, and a results uh, step, because we are not going to work with geometry and mesh, like I said. Especially mesh warrants a course of its own. So if we're going to use work with geometry and mesh, we're going to have to we're going to we're going to have to need way more time. Okay, so we're going to basically work with our boundary conditions, our solution conditions, and with our results. Okay, and we work from top to bottom. We establish our boundary conditions, then we establish our resolution, and see if we're going to if we're having convergence, and then we analyze our results. And this is the overall UI of the boundary conditions uh, setup, okay? And we're going to have something like this. We're going to work with uh, basic settings and f depending on the problem, we're going to work with different types of variables right here, okay? So, what I want to do right now is I'm going to show you how to download this software, okay? So how to download the academic version of the software, okay? So what you're going to need to do is go to your search engine of choice. I'm going to use Google and you can type ANSYS, okay? Then you're going to search for this website right here ansys.com and you're going to click on it okay so you have the ansys website right here right now what you're going to need to do is you're going to this academic spot right here and then you go to free student software and click download now after this you go to ansys students and you're going right now the the newest version is the ANSYS Student 2020 R2. So you're gonna need, you're gonna click here, agree and download. And then you're gonna start downloading the ANSYS Academic uh, software. I'm not going to download it because I already have it. So after that, and after unzipping your, your file, all you need to do is run your setup.exe. I suggest you run it as an administrator to avoid uh, some some issues in the setup. And from here on out, it's a very simple, simple steps. Okay. Any time now. Uh, here we go. Okay, so if you have the software license agreement right here, you agree to it, and then you check 
to see if the associate file extensions with ANSYS product is selected and then you see how much uh, room you have, you're going to need 28.1 and all you need to do is click next. After clicking next, for example, I'm going to show you here. All you need to do is going to, is going to be wait for this bar to complete. Okay. And then the software is going to be installed. To open the software is going to depend based on our lectures because our lectures will be constituted by I'm going to solve different engineering problems with you in each class. So sometimes we're going to run the problem, the, the software in its standalone mode and sometimes we're going to use the, the software in its workbench mode. So if you're going to run it in the standalone mode, we're going to use the only the CFD, CFX uh, aspect. If we're going to run in the workbench mode, we're going to run the entire software and then we're going to pick the CFX package that we're going to use, okay? But this is something that I'm going to show you every course based on the problem that we're going to solve, okay? So that's it for the first lesson. If you have any doubt, you can send me through email and I'll see you guys next, next week for the first problem that we are going to solve, okay? Thank you very much and good luck.